Hey, so Chris, um, thank you for, for joining me. Where, where in the world are you, Seattle? Uh, I'm in New York, actually. Oh. I, um, yeah, I've been, been in Seattle for 15 years, but I grew up on the, in the Northeast uh, U.S. up here. And uh, sister has a two-year-old, and she's just about to in seven days due to have a second one. Parents live around here, too. So mm-hmm. um, I've been doing a little bit of uh, uh, being, having, having no, no like kids or, or wife or any kind of attachments of my own uh, directly. I can live anywhere as a remote worker. So rented an apartment in New York, and I've been spending a few months here. Um, oh, cool. it's, been, it's been fun. But I'm also now in the, the epicenter of uh, the, uh, I think today, actually, if you look at healthdata.org, is forecasted to be the peak um, hospital resource use in the in the in the state of New York. Um, so hopefully we've hit the peak of the curve. You know that's a forecast. You never you never know until after, and uh, are starting to come down. Um, well, I mean, yeah. Let, let's let's talk about how that's impacting what you do because you 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 developer advocate at uh, Heroku. Um, Correct. So. I know that some of the Heroku developer relations program involves going to events and, and things like that. Um, but just overall, what's, what's changed for you over the past few weeks as a result of, of this situation? Um, yeah, um, kind of both quite a lot has changed and not much has changed. Um, in the quite a lot bucket, um, all of our event sponsorships have been paused. Um, so, um, well, let's say all of our event travel, any developer advocate travel to an event has, has been completely paused. Um, we're not doing any of that. Um, Salesforce has actually been really good at taking care of its people and being like really on top of it. I thought it was like a little bit too like overwhelming at first, but safety and security team at Salesforce has been awesome in like giving us all the knowledge we need to, to do our job and then only kind of putting restrictions in place when they like absolutely have to. So, um, yeah, we're not we're not doing any traveling at all. Um, I, I personally am not doing any personal travel. Um, also, um, but then on the not much has changed side, um, I as a remote worker, um, like sixty to seventy percent of the people that work directly on Heroku are remote. Um, so so more more than half of the folks that work on Heroku directly are are remote, and um, uh, a lot of us are are used to this. It's just working from home. Um, but there's probably, I noticed, I have noticed on um, uh, video conferences, calls like this, there's a big difference between those uh, people who live alone and those people who have families. In that me living alone, um, I am like, even as an introvert, uh, craving contact with other, other humans because I you know, don't get out of the house much. I don't uh, you know, respect the six foot rules. Um, but then those who have families, you know, are kind of maybe going a little bit bananas with everyone around them all the time and, and having to deal with childcare and um, making sure they have a good enough internet connection even to like be able to do video meetings like this. So um, yeah, that's been the main change. Everything's been, you know, travel's been paused um, um, uh, personally. And then, you know, that's, that's the same for, for developer relations kind of overall at Salesforce. How, how does that affect your, um, your ability to get things done? You know, you must have a, pl- a plan that required you to travel. So what are you going to do instead of yeah. what's not going to happen and what are you going to do instead? Like what are you not going right. to achieve? So definitely not, as I said, traveling, not going to, um, uh, for instance, PyCon, I think is coming up or maybe would have already happened in April. Um, not going there. The last event that I was at was QCon London, actually. Um, it was early March and um, uh, it was kind of right when things were, were ticking up in the US, um, I think, and in, and in the UK. And, um, um, you know, we even when we were there, we actually even like considered cutting the event short or our presence there short and coming home. Uh, but we didn't. We we stayed there th- through the end of it. Um, the event actually did a great job. They had uh, like a choke point where you had to use hand sanitizer when you came in the building, and then they had it at all the elevators and major doors. And each attendee got their own personal little hand sanitizer bottle, um, and they were encouraging hand washing a lot too. So they were kind of like following the, you know, like the WHO and CDC recommendations. Um, um, so that was the last event. Uh, 
but to be honest, um, I mean, I love events. It's, it's like, you know, the physical contact with the, the community, um, being with them in front of them, like seeing body language, seeing facial expressions, kind of sharing deeper emotions, I guess is great. But um, I've always kind of had this, this kind of thought in the back of my head, which I've never fully like resolved or, or, or um, completely like justified or figured out in that events are, are great as a developer advocate activity. But when you think about the population of developers, uh, the portion of the population of developers that you're actually getting to interact with and, and be around, it's very small. I mean, it's probably like, you know, um, I don't know exact numbers. I should probably figure this out. Like at PyCon, PyCon's a huge event. It's a couple thousand people, I think, but um, it's still probably a single digit percent, maybe maybe even less, like less than 1% of all the Python developers out there that we could be connecting with and engaging with. So it's a good opportunity. Um, and events are a good kind of like forcing function for content creation. You know, you gotta create a talk. You maybe, if you have a booth there, we're creating talking points or a demo app or an activity for those people that, that come to our booth. And then we can reuse all that content after the event. So that's, that's great. But, but again, it's just a forcing function. There's other ways to, to get that content created. And so, yeah, yeah, we've, we've switched to completely everything digital. And this is across Salesforce too. It's not, not just kind of Heroku focused, but Salesforce DevRel. Um, we're doing, uh, starting to do more uh, live streaming, like live coding. Um, we're trying to amp up the, the content pipeline, um, like make sure it's more, more full content being like blog posts, um, kind of non-live things, I guess, blog posts or webinars or short video explanations or things like that. Um, but then I guess like stepping back a little bit, the one thing that I've been thinking about a lot, and this is actually just not, not just me, but it's been... The, the Heroku leadership and Salesforce leadership in general is that uh, as, as we've kind of come into this crisis, all of the, the communication from kind of the, the top down has always been very like number one and sometimes even number two has been like your well-being, employee well-being. Um, um, and that's, uh, I was a little bit surprised by that because, you know, like despite a company being made up of humans, it's still a um, like a, it needs to generate money um, and we all would like our paychecks. So, you know, I'm sure there are fears among people of like, you know, what is revenue? How do, how do we make sure we're getting, we're getting paid? Um, but I like the long-term focus of like, you know what, it's great to make sure you're getting paid, but if you don't first make sure your employees and your people, your teammates, et cetera, are healthy and happy and productive, like able to do work, then, doesn't matter how much if your first concern is like how much you worry about your first concern being make money. Um, yeah. So that's been great. Um, be from Salesforce. I'm hearing that from a lot of, a lot of people as well is that the companies are really focusing on how do we keep each other safe and, 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 and also mentally well in a time when we're spending yes. a lot more time indoors. Um, so, yeah. uh, so talking about the replacements for, the events so the live coding and things you're doing do you have any yeah have you learned anything about um how to do this you know infrastructure wise tooling and so on because you know yeah everelcon's going online we're looking at how are we gonna put that on and i'm sure that lots of developer relations people are all hungry for someone else to to give them some tips on 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 how to pull yeah. this off yeah for sure we've been um there's like a big document going around internally among uh, well, Salesforce, like overall developer relations in, in that um, uh, we're, we're just a brainstorm doc. Like we're trying to figure out what are all the different ways and fun ways we could do um, uh, things, not, not replace, I guess, but what are the different ways we could, do, we could engage with developers in a, in a useful to them way, valuable way uh, digitally. Um, so they're, uh, yeah, so, so live, Live coding, like live streaming, was the first thing that just made sense right out of the out of the gate. Um, fortunately, um, uh, Trailhead, which is um, like Salesforce's learning and and learning about Salesforce platform, they actually have something called Trailhead Live. So they kind of had some infrastructure built out already to just kind of jump in, you know, add add someone to the to the list, the queue that that wants to um, 
put on a Trailhead Live session. Um, so uh, we kind of just jumped into that. It's it's a little bit like there's a little bit of dissonance if if like you um, come from the kind of the Heroku purple and see Trailhead Live. Um, but we figured you know it's it's worth a try. We're gonna we're gonna see how see how this works, um, and then you know use this this great thing that's already been built for us, um, and then and then give feedback if, if there are things that we think should be changed for like the developer brand or the Heroku brand or, or um, to make it more engaging in a way that maybe developers are interested in. Um, so yeah, that's been the thing. We've thought about like, um, I mean, I guess the other, the other thing that, that I've been kind of, I guess I've, trying to, try, I've tried to be empathetic to like, what do people want? Like, what do you, what do developers want at this point? Um, and I'm sure there's, there's not a single answer. Different people are experiencing this, this crisis in different ways. Um, the, uh, some people like want distractions, right? And they want um, to read more blog posts. Uh, we've actually seen podcast um, listen numbers go down. Um, uh, my my hunch is that that means that's because of less commuting and people listen to podcasts while they're yeah. in cars commuting um, uh, or in a subway, like, yeah, somehow commuting, subway, bus, car. Um, uh, but but we've seen some blog channels go up, um, like the Heroku engineering blog has actually gone up. So someone, I, and I don't know, we haven't done, you know, like statistical studies on it, but has gone up in March. Um, um, uh, and so, yeah, I want to figure out what, what do developers want and how, how do they want to um, either just passively consume or engage digitally with other humans and not just other humans, I guess, but like, you know, a company or, or a product or a tool like a developer tool um, or their developer community if they're interested in that. Um, so let's see. So, so one of the things actually that came out of that was like one thing someone said, one thing I really like um, about events is the hallway track. That's like one of the main, after going to a few events, you're like, okay, now I'm a veteran at going to, to developer software events. I know there are a few talks I want to see. Um, maybe I want to skip the keynote because it's like a marketing pitch from some company, but hallway track like I want to I want to talk to people and meet people so I've been thinking about how do we how do we replace that and I don't have an answer <laughs> so hopefully someone watching this maybe can like share some ideas I'm not I'm not sure if there will be a way to comment or, or kind of reply back to this but um, you know there's there's zoom like like we're using right now to, to record this um, zoom has this concept of breakout rooms so maybe there's like some way to connect people there um, there's this tool called donut.ai that um, uh, we use internally for Slack that, that randomly connects people that maybe work on the same team or work on similar teams and says, hey, you two should get to know each other. Um, uh, it's kind of like just a random coffee break pairing with, with someone. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd love to hear other people's ideas if, if anyone has ideas on how to replace human connection in the hallway track. Piece. Yeah. There's, there's a tool called Remo, R-E-M-O dot com, I think it is. And um, okay. uh, Kevin Lewis at Vonage uh, pointed me to it um, because they're using it to replace the meetups that they would host and things like that. And uh, yeah. that, the way that I describe it is it's a cross between Animal Crossing and Second Life if it was in 2D. You basically get a bird's eye view of, of I guess, a conference space, but they're cabaret style oh, tables and then you can select a table to sit at if there's a free space and then that puts yeah. you into a video conference with the other people at that virtual table but also you see yeah. the speaker and the speaker's slides um so it's uh i guess that that's one way of doing it uh, to me it feels yeah. a bit school morphic you know kind of feels a bit trying to shoehorn in uh, uh, some yeah. way of doing it in but a, i'd love to have a uh, yeah. i'd love to see how it works in practice yeah, totally. It reminds me of my mom used to play bridge and be really into online bridge playing. And she would like turn on this, uh, open up this app on her computer and it would be just like you described. It would be like, okay, here's the hall of all the people playing bridge and all the tables and you could choose one to either actually, you could be a spectator and just view the game or you could join if there was a, a free seat available there. Um, totally makes sense. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't think of that. 
So, so longer term, what, what do you think uh, impact this will have on how you do developer relations at Heroku and more broadly at Salesforce? Or will you just go back yeah. to how you did things before? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I've actually enjoyed, maybe not enjoyed, uh, uh, but I've been intrigued and, and kind of fascinated to watch um, other, my, my peers and, and colleagues experience with moving to remote work. Um, when they are, have been used to going into an office every day. Um, uh, and it's actually been a bit more of a surprise to me than I, than I thought in that it's, um, and, 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 you know, kind of being empathetic, I should have realized this. Like when I started it, it was a big change and I had to kind of think about how I, how I spent my time and how I, how I behaved and acted and, and like kind of different stimuluses and distractions and things all around me. Um, but you know we we um, we have we uh, Salesforce has like all hands calls and uh, the executive team all working from home join that call and and share whatever information you know they need to share with with the entire company um, and everyone's working from home it, it's kind of like in many ways it's it's almost almost like a leveler in that like everyone is now at the same level working with the same things of course those people getting used to remote work are you know are trying to kind of catch up in that way. Um, but I think it's been a good, good exposure for a lot of people to like to see that remote work can work. Um, I've, I'm a big remote work advocate in general. Um, it may not work for all roles, but um, I think it can work for in many more places than it does currently. So I'm excited to see um, companies ho hopefully um, be a little bit more receptive of uh, remote work uh, being, a, being a normal thing. Um, and then going back to the, the kind of event topic, um, developer event kind of trade show topic we, we chatted about earlier, the, um, uh, I, I also hope that like the, the creativity of coming up with ideas and ways to interact with people virtually um, persist. Like I'm sure events will come back in, in some fashion, in some way. There are people that have been saying it's not going to happen, but I think that's more clickbait on the internet. Um, I think it will come back, but I, I also hope that we can maintain some of these maybe more like um, uh, accessible forms of engagement with developer audiences. Accessible meaning like you know, someone that lives in a rural area maybe and can't travel to a developer event or their, their job doesn't let them go to an event or maybe it's someone in, in um, I don't know, like Africa or someone, you know, very geographically far plus doesn't have the resources to get to kind of where the main developer events are. So I hope, we, yeah, we can, we can maintain some of this kind of newfound digital, um, digital engagement or digital connection learning methods that, that we, uh, that are kind of born out of this experience. Right. Yeah. I, th I think uh, we're going to certainly come away with this with a, a different view of, of how to do developer relations and, and yeah. if nothing else, um, perhaps a, a reconsideration of, of some of the things we used to assume to be true. Uh, but yeah, well, look, sure. Chris, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Um, stay safe in New York and uh, hope to see you around. Yeah, thanks very much. Same to you, Matthew. Uh, see you later. Yes.